hello coders i hope you are coding well in the previous video we created a page to show the orders to the admin and we created an api to update the status of the order and in today's video we will call this update order status api from our angular application and we will create a page to show the orders of the user so let's get started so to create the change order status api call we can go to our admin service and here we can copy this get placed orders api and we can paste it here and then we need to rename the method to change order status and after this we need to mention the params and the first param we want is order id and the type of this order id will be number and after the order id we need to get the status which we want to update and this status will be of type string after this we need to update the url of the api which is slash api slash admin and then order and after this we need to pass the path variables and to do that first of all we need to replace these quotes with backticks so we can pass the variables and then we can inject our variables here the first variable we want is the order id and then after slash we will pass our order status our change order status api call is ready now let's save this file and let's go to the order.component.ts and in this file we need to create a method and we can name this method as change order status and in this method we need to mention the params which are order id of type number and the second param we need is status of type string now in this method we will call our admin service dot change order status method and in the params we will pass the order id and the status which we are getting in the params and then we need to subscribe and we will write the arrow function and in this arrow function we will write one if condition and we will check our response dot id and if it is not equal to null then it means we got the success from our backend and we will use mat snack bar and we will show a message that order status changed successfully and after this we will call our get placed orders method to update the data on the page and at the end we will write the else case as well and in this else case we will show a message that something went wrong now let's save this file as well and let's go to the html file in the html file we need to update the mat menus and here we can write the code for the click event and on the click of our shift option we will call our change order status method and we will pass the order id which we can get by calling order dot id and after the order id we want to pass the status and on the click of the shift button we will pass the status as shipped now we will copy this code and we will post here on the second button and on the click of this delivered button we need to send the status as delivered and that's it for our method call now we need to update this code to show the order status and we need to call order dot order status instead of status now let's save this file and as you can see our application got compiled without any errors now let's go to the browser and let's validate the functionality to change the order status so after the login we can click on this orders page and here we can see the details of the order and we can see the status as well now let's click on this action button and here we need to click on this first option shipped 
and as you can see after the click we got the message order status changed successfully and we got the updated record as well which shows the status as shipped now let's click again on this action button and this time we need to click on this delivered option and you can see we got the status as delivered now let's go to our backend application and create an api to get the orders for the customer here in the backend application to create the api we need to go to the cart service implementation and here we need to create an other method and it will return list of order dto and we can name this method as get my placed orders and in the params we need to mention long user id and after this we need to go to the order repository and here we need to create a method to get the orders by user id and order status and to do that we can copy this existing method and we can paste it here and we need to update the return type of this method because this method will return list of orders and then we need to update the query and we need to update the order status part and instead of passing one order status we will pass the list of order status and here in the query we need to add a keyword of in so we can search by the list and here in the params we need to update it to the list as well our repository method is ready now let's go back to the card service implementation and here we need to write the return statement and we can call our order repository dot find by user id and order status in and here in the params we need to pass the user id and then we need to pass the list of the status so we can use list dot of and in this list we can pass our order status and the first status we want is order status dot placed and then we want the orders with the status of shipped and with the order status of delivered and at the end we can use the stream method and then we need to use the map method to convert our entity to the DTO and for this we can call get order DTO method in the order and then we can collect it to the list now let's copy this and let's go to the card service and mention this here now let's go to the customer card controller and here we need to create the endpoint and this method will return a response entity of list of order DTO and we can name this method as my placed orders and after that we need to give the path variable annotation and we need to mention long user ID and in this method we need to write the return statement and we will return response entity dot ok and here we need to call cart service dot get my placed orders and in the params we can pass the user id and after this we need to annotate this method with at the rate get mapping and for the path we can pass it as slash my orders slash user id and that's it for our get my placed orders endpoint now let's run our backend application and as you can see our application is up on port 8080 without any errors and that's it for this video in the next video we will create the component and api call and we will hit this endpoint to show the orders of the customer